as you probably yeah. all know if you tuned in yesterday that there were significant uh, changes overnight on the night of the 7th and early morning of the 8th of December where the fountain heights started to oscillate and they actually went up quite a bit higher. Uh, during the day yesterday, those fountain heights dropped, but they were still um, oscillating a lot more than they previously had been. So we went from kind of steady uh, 100 to 200 foot high fountains to fountains that reached as high as several hundred feet. And uh, as of this morning, we're seeing the fountains drop down to much lower levels, about uh, 30 feet or so. Um, this is uh, led to producing a flow that is moving away from the vent. Um, and is only about two kilometers from the vent, so not quite as far as the flow progress that was charted yesterday. These flows are very sluggish and not making it very far. There's no more lava feeding the old front that was down in the saddle um, and within under two miles to the highway. That flow uh, last night continued to glow and spread. There's still quite a bit of lava contained in that. And uh, the center of that mass is about twice as high as the edges. So we expect that to kind of keep pushing and flattening out perhaps for a couple of days that people will be seeing that front glow and be very slowly move. But it is not uh, any threat to the highway anymore at all. Um, and I think I'll just turn it over to Tim because he was up there yesterday and, and let him add uh, some more observations. So Tim. Thanks, Ken. Hi everyone, I'm Tim Orr, with the, uh, I'm a geologist with the USGS. Uh, I'm going to share my screen, uh, show you some photos from yesterday, as well as some photos from the field crews that are out today. Uh, this is from yesterday morning when I flew out. I was in the field yesterday. Uh, prior to yesterday, the flows have been concentrated on the western side of the cone in the area I'm circling with my mouse here. Um, be two nights ago now, the, the activity shifted over to the eastern side of this of this cone. And this is the area which was producing the higher fountains um, two nights ago as well as uh, through part of yesterday. Uh, so this is early in the morning about uh, 7.30 or so. And uh, a view from looking up the channel, you can see these are some of the higher fountains uh, slightly tilted over toward the north. Uh, possi possibly this flank of the cone was sloughing in and partly uh, uh, obstructing the fountain and making it lean like that. Uh, even while this was going on, the level was still quite, had dropped a bit in the channel and was uh, below the rim of the channel. You can see this this uh, this drop between the rim of the channel and the, the lava flow itself. Uh, down slope at that time, flows were traveling about four kilometers, so about two and a half miles or so. Uh, there was, you can see the, the front in this picture here, there's also a little tongue that sticks out down to here, uh, but a much smaller flow yesterday than we've been seeing earlier with the main flow that had come down uh, last week. And then here's some screenshots from the webcam up there. So this is from yesterday. This is after I left the field yesterday around midday. And these are some of the really high fountains that were going on, uh, several hundred feet high. But then in the afternoon, uh, the fountains drop back down to, you know, you know, 100 feet or 150 feet or so. And then, so today, they're down even lower. So this is the view from this morning, uh, just a few minutes ago. And uh, you can see that the fountain is just a really low, maybe 30 feet high fountain. And this is concentrated back on the west end of the cone. Um, so here's some photos from the field crew. Um, Apologize for the uh, quality of the photos. These are being sent back to our messaging app, so they're a little bit low resolution. But you can see, uh, yesterday the fountain was on this part of the uh, cone, and now the fountain is clear at the western edge of the cone system, or, the, or the, of the cone, and feeding into a small ponded area, which is partly drowning the fountain, and then that's flowing into the channel. And you can see again, now the lava stream is really low down at the channel, so a clear drop in the effusion rate from the vent. Uh, those flows are only traveling now about two kilometers down slope for not, so just over a mile down slope from the vent. Uh, they're leaving the vent system up here, the cone, uh, down the channel, converting to ah, ah and then becoming really pasty and sticky as they go down slope. 
And then I have a video as well, which was taken this morning. So hopefully you can see this okay. You can see how slow everything is today compared to what it has been out there. And the spattering, like I said, is at the western end of the cone system. There's actually a little hole that formed on the outer flank of the cone, and spatter is coming out of that hole as well. But Mauna Loa uh, behaves a little bit differently than Kilauea. And uh, a lot of its eruptions start with what we've had, which is a very high effusion rate uh, phase that drives large AA flows, which we've seen over the last uh, week and a half. Um, these eruptions can do one of two things. They can either um, just slowly uh, decrease or even rapidly decrease and come to an end. And we've been saying, you know, that somewhere typically these eruptions, uh, the, the this phase of the eruptions lasts from somewhere around two to three weeks in most of these. Um, somewhere between a third and a half of the Northeast Rift Zone uh, eruptions have another potential behavior too, which is to go into a sustained low effusion rate where basically the amount of lava coming out is more or less equal to what we think is the amount of lava coming into the system at depth. And right now we're in a, kind of a transition between those, it appears. It, it appears that we're winding down the high effusion rate part of the eruption, but the question remains whether this is on its way for the eruption to end or whether or not that this may be switching over um, to the lower effusion rate part of the eruption. Typically, these do shift to Pohoihoi because as you saw in those pictures the current channel is sitting within the other channel but it's crusting over in there too so there's not enough lava to fill the channel like there was so it's going to cool and crust over right now that lava coming out is extremely viscous so it really depends on what the characteristics of the lava being emitted directly from the vent are whether it can actually go to Pohoihoi or not but if it is going to go in the low effusion rate, it will start to try and attempt to make lava tubes at least. Um, without making the lava tubes like we've seen this morning, you're going to see a lot of shorter uh -uh flows that are probably going to pile up around the vent quite a bit and not make great distance away from the vent. Just because there's low volume and they're going to cool pretty quickly as they move away.